Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 17.2 beta one 17.2 beta one released to developers and hopefully soon to public beta testers, either by the time you're watching this video or the following day. And this is just one day after Apple released iOS 17.1 to the public. So if you want to jump right into this beta, you can turn that on and you'll see it available. Now, if you want to go to any specific feature or different things I talk about in this video, be sure to check out all of the different chapters linked in the description. And along with iOS 17.2 beta one, Apple also released iPad OS 17.2 beta one watch OS 10.2 beta one, along with TV OS HomePod OS 17.2 beta one and Mac OS 14.2 beta one, as well as some other older Mac OS updates as well. Now this particular update is pretty large since it has to fully reinstall the OS at 6.39 gigabytes. That's on the 15 pro max and should be about that size since you're installing the whole OS all over again. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. We'll go to settings, then we'll go to general, then about. And as you can see, the build number is 21C5029G. This update also does have a modem update in it as well and brings a bunch of new features and changes. The first one is the all new journal app we've been promised all, all along. So if we go into this, you'll see I've already set it up, but let's go into the iPhone 11 and set it up so we can walk through this together. You'll see it says, welcome to journal. You tap continue and then you can start journaling. However, it does give you some suggestions and you do need to enable this so that it can use that information. It says get inspired. Summaries can help you reflect on topics you might want to write about, such as places you go and photos you take. Also, it says suggestions are private. Suggestions only appear if you write them or save them to your journal. So you'll see you can turn on journaling suggestions and allow it, or you don't have to use it at all. And it brings up different photos and things here with recommended and more. So you'll see that here. You also have the option in your settings to enable or disable that under privacy. So under privacy and security, if you scroll down, you'll see journaling suggestions. You can enable that or disable that here for everything specifically. So we have activity, media, contacts, photos, significant lo locations. You can clear the history of journaling as well as prefer suggestions with others discoverable by others. So you can turn all of those on or off some of them or all of them, whatever your preference is. And if we go back into the journaling app, you'll see, this is my first journal entry. We can add one here. We have different things such as suggestions. What's something you always enjoy, even in difficult times, you can actually just get inspiration from this. What's something you could do this week to recharge your battery, go into this and start typing about it. Of course you can add different photos. You've got different options here as well. So if you want to add maybe a suggestion, you have that option. Lots of nice updates here and I'll be using this over the next week or so to see what it's like, see what it's like to journal with this. And you can see different things from moment date, custom date and more. So I'm really excited to use this. Unfortunately, it's not available on the iPad just yet. So it's not showing up there. Hopefully it will in the future. Now, as far as other updates, Apple has updated music with the new favorites playlist. Now we were able to favorite songs and things like that with iOS 17.1. Now we have an all new favorite songs playlist. So you'll see it's bringing up all my different favorite songs that I've favorited in the past. And we also have a new option where we can collaborate on playlists as well. So if we go back in and maybe create a new playlist, we'll just say new playlist. And then we tap create. If we go into that playlist, you'll see an option in the upper right. We can actually share this playlist and invite friends to join and approve collaborators. So you can start collaboration with someone and build a playlist that you both want to listen to, whether that's a spouse, significant other friends, family, or whoever. So you have that option. It's finally available in this update. iOS 17.2 also adds an update for new widgets on the lock screen and elsewhere. So if we go in and customize, we'll go in here. Maybe we'll get rid of this widget we have here for the weather. We'll scroll down to weather and under weather. If we go over to wind, we have a new widget here. So under wind, we have a new widget that shows the wind direction. We'll just drag this up here and you'll see it shows the wind direction and what it currently is tap on it. Well, let's tap done, then tap on it and it will bring us right into the weather. So that's been updated as well. We also have some new weather widgets as well for the lock screen and home screen. So you'll see here, we have three new ones for the home screen with precipitation. We also just have a forecast as well as sunset. Additionally, we have a clock widget as well. So we have an all new clock widget. That's the digital clock. So lots of little nice updates that they've added with 17.2.
Now, if you have an iPhone 15 Pro or 15 Pro Max with the action button, there's an update here as well. So if we go into our settings, and maybe it's not responsive. There we go. That was a little odd, maybe a bug with this update. But if we go into the action button within the action button, we have a new one for translate. We can set this as translate and translate phrases or have a conversation with someone in another language. So we'll set it for that press and hold, and it brings up the translate app. So it says open app to accept the consent form. First, we've got a new splash screen, which says conversation views, auto translate and system wide translation. We'll tap continue. We can improve dictation or not. And now if we go into the translate app, it brings it up right here with a really nice graphic at the top. Let's see that again. So we'll swipe that off. We'll press the button again. And you'll see it's listening. I really like this graphic that they have here. So it says listening in Spanish. If we switch to English, let's press again. Now it's listening in Spanish again, but again, you see this nice animation at the top. This really is reminding me of something new as far as the overall design, maybe to go along with Apple vision pro or something else, but it looks great. So I'm glad to see that it says, hold the translate. We'll get rid of it for now. Now we also have a new option in our settings. If we go back here and then we go to general and then under general, go to airplay and handoff under airplay. We have airplay receiver. It says stream or share content from Apple vision pro to your iPhone. So again, they're getting ready for that new headset that launches next year. And we can turn that on and allow airplay for everyone or just for the current user here. Additionally, we can require a password. So if you want to stream that, that will be great to share with you. Once I get my hands on it to show you what it looks like, we can stream it, see what it looks like and maybe record it on the phone or Mac. Now, if we go into messages, they've updated this. So within messages and sent to me by my friend, Brom, we now have reactions here. If we press and hold, we can add a sticker reaction. So we've had stickers before, but now if we tap on add sticker, we can just add one like this and it goes directly there before we could tap on the message, go in and maybe add a sticker this way where we could just drag and drop it. But now we can double tap and use it as a reaction that way back within settings. If we scroll down to focus under focus, if we go into a focus mode and then scroll down again at the bottom, there's a new focus filter option for music. So we can go into add filter, and then music. And now we can enable or disable using listening history. It says choose if music played will influence recommendations and mixes appear in recently played or be shown to others on Apple music. So if you don't want what you have set up in your focus mode to show up in Apple music, you can either enable this or just leave it disabled and it will work as intended. So that's a new option that they've added for a focus mode. Also, if we go into contacts, there's an update. If you edit a contact poster, and this is my own here, we can go and maybe create new. And then if we go to monogram under monogram, maybe we want to change the text here under the text, we have a new color option. So we have sort of a rainbowed color option. So we can adjust, of course, the text itself and adjust the color, but we just have this all new rainbow option that sort of makes everything a rainbow there. So it's a small update, but something that's actually new within books. It's been updated as well. If we go into books here, open a book up and then tap the bottom menu options here, go into themes and settings, then tap this icon. We now have a new option for fast fade instead of slide curl. We have fast fade. So if we want to turn the page, just sort of fades quickly to the next page. So I actually prefer the traditional version where it sort of curls like a book, but you can change that based on what you'd like. So if we go back to curl, you'll see it here and now we can curl it like a page. So that's something I typically leave it as, but now you have a new option for that fast version or fast fade. Now we've also got a feature we've been waiting for since about December of last year. That's contact key verification. There's a couple different ways you can see this. Now what that does is allow you to actually verify who you're texting or messaging and let you know that it's the specific person you actually have in your contacts. So if we go into settings, tap our name at the top and in our Apple ID settings, if we scroll to the bottom, you'll see here, we have contact key verification. If we go into this and enable it, we get a new splash screen that actually explains what it does. It says contact key verification allows you to manually verify who you are messaging with by comparing contact verification codes in person or over the phone. So you can enable this tap continue. It does need to be updated on all your devices. So in order to enable it, you have to update all your devices here or remove them. So for now I'll just tap okay and I won't use it, but I will be using it in the future. So that's just a way to verify someone is who they say they are. And within messages, if you 
you tap the name at the top. And if you scroll to the bottom, you'll also have an option to turn on contact key verification. So you can access this directly through a message as well. Also, one thing I wanted to mention is TVOS 17.2 beta one has a visual refresh in the TV app. I posted this on X or Twitter, and this was thanks to a viewer who sent this in named Benz. But you can see here that there's a new redesign with a menu on the side. Basically you press the back button when you're in the TV app and you'll have a new interface here. So that's been updated there as well. So I'm expecting a lot of nice changes and updates in future beta updates as well. If we go over to the release notes in the feedback app, and I'll link this in the description, this is public facing as well. You'll see the different things with known issues. So there's still some issues within music where the favorite songs playlist may take a while to appear on some devices and a workaround says, add a single song to your Apple music library and the favorite song playlist should appear within a few minutes. So some issues still with that. Also, it mentions the new contact key verification feature. Additionally, we've got some known issues with things such as the knowledge base, verifying another user and more. So there's still some bugs in this update. And if we scroll down, you've got some known issues in messages as well as personal hotspot. You'll see here, there's some resolved issues, store kit and more. So quite a few things that have been resolved, quite a th few things that have been updated. And so far it turns out to be a pretty nice update, pretty feature packed so far. As far as bug fixes, we don't really know of anything for sure. In fact, that notification bug is still here. So it's still there. I thought it was fixed, but it seems like it's not. Additionally, we need to know if maybe a Wi-Fi issue is fixed or the reboot issue is fully fixed in this update and the phone getting too hot or anything like that. We'll talk about heat in a moment, but overall the update seems to be pretty good just in the hour I've used it or so. And the overall performance seems to be pretty fast as well. I haven't noticed as many stutters or anything like that. You'll see things are nice and smooth, although maybe it doesn't ramp up to 120 Hertz as fast, but in general, it seems to be pretty quick overall. So if we go into iPhone 11 here and scroll, this one's updated as well, or maybe go into music. The actual scroll speed of music seems to be a little bit slower and the scroll speed in general seems to be a little slower. Maybe that's just me, but let me know if you're seeing that as well. But the overall performance feels fast and smooth, but maybe it's a little bit slower as far as the animations. Now, as far as the overall heat, well, we did just install a six gigabyte update, so it's going to take a little while for it to settle down. It is a little bit warm, but it's not by any means hot at all. We'll check the benchmarks in a moment, but it seems to be nice and cool so far. We'll look at that more in detail this weekend with a follow-up. As far as battery life, let's go into settings here and under about, you'll see the cycle count of my battery is at 25 currently. And unfortunately they did not add that feature to older phones. I wasn't able to see it on the iPhone 11. Maybe they'll bring it eventually. There's not really a reason they shouldn't. And if we go to battery, battery health and charging, I'm at 100%. And under charging optimization, the 80% limit is not there on older phones either yet. Again, something they should definitely bring, but they haven't yet. If we take a look at the last 10 days while I was on iOS 17.1 yesterday, it says I had nine hours and six minutes of screen active time, one hour and 20 minutes of screen idle time. Again, I don't think this is accurate, but we'll have to wait and see show activity actually shows six minute of Safari usage, but it's 36% of my battery. So that doesn't add up in any way. And today I've used about 50% of my battery and it says 10 hours. And I definitely have not used this for 10 hours today. As you'll see, it was last charged at 8, 17 AM it's 3:29. So it's really not been in use full time and it hasn't really been well a full 10 hours of usage with the screen on. So there's some concerns there. I hope they really update this and fix it. I'll report it in the feedback app is inaccurate as well. Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 17.2 beta one, I would say hold off at this point, unless you've really got to try this journaling app or maybe some of the new widgets, I would probably hold off at this point as it's probably going to be unstable compared to 17.1. However, if you have a backup or an additional phone, then certainly you could try it out then. Just make sure you have a backup and know what you're getting into. As far as iOS 17.2 beta two, well, we could see pretty rapid releases again, just like iOS 17.1. As we get closer to the end of the year, we typically get another release and then maybe a beta and then nothing until January. So based off of that, we could see weekly updates, maybe Tuesday to Thursday of next week. But if not, we'll have beta to the following week. Usually we have betas every couple of weeks early on, but again, we've had a pretty different release cycle this time around. So we'll have to wait and see what they do, but hopefully we get some updates quickly and maybe this will release to the public before the end of November with the Thanksgiving break, or it could be early December. Either way, we don't really know until we get that first beta and see where we're at.
Now, as far as the overall benchmarks, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Benchmarks completed and the phone isn't that hot at all. And if we take a look at benchmarks, I actually had to run this twice. And the reason is, is it actually crashed the first time. So if we go back into our photos here, Within photos, you'll see it says the benchmark result may be invalid due to an issue with the timers on this system. It crashed halfway through and then I reran it. So maybe it's a little bit low since I had to rerun it, but I got 2,832 for single core, 6,703 for multi-core. If we go to the CPU history, you'll see it's okay as far as that goes, but a little bit lower than iOS 17.1, probably because I reran it. So I'll rerun this again on the weekend, see what it's like. Hopefully it will bump back up where we would expect. It doesn't really feel any slower, but again, it's a beta one version of iOS 17.2. So I'm not really too concerned with that. So that's everything with iOS 17.2 beta one. If I find any additional features, of course, I'll share them in the weekend follow-up like I normally do. And if you found anything, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.